in an abandoned neighborhood. The movie kicks off with an old man dragging a young woman by her hair through the streets. Meanwhile, a trio of young individuals, two men and a woman, gain access to an upscale residence by disabling its alarm system. The most anxious among them reiterates their guidelines upon entering. No cash and only items valued below 10 Gs. They swiftly pilfer from the premises, reactivating the alarm and shattering the front door before fleeing, setting off the alarm's blare. Subsequently, while driving, they engage in casual conversation, puffing on pot. The anxious dude begins sharing news about their departing friend with the other pair. They brush it off, claiming that departing Detroit is just a norm, mentioning their own plans to head to California post the next heist, with no intention of returning. Despite the girl's invitation, he refuses due to his commitment to his dad. They drop him at his place, where he heads straight for his dad's study, returning the key swiped from the recently burgled house. Turns out, his old man works in home security. Meanwhile, the third member, Money, tries to sell off their stolen goods but falls short of his expected earnings. He has a little back and forth with the buyer, but the guy advises him that if he wants cash, he ought to swipe cash. He drops a hint about a fresh gig. Money spills the beans to his pals. It's a crib owned by a solitary vet, guarded by the jittery guy's pops, nestled in a deserted part of town. That doesn't exactly boost confidence in the other pair, so Money lays out the rationale behind the heist. Apparently, the vet received a massive settlement of 300k or more after his daughter got mowed down by a wealthy girl, and that's what they're after. The girl's on board way quicker than the nervous dude, Alex. He's fretting about the fallout of snagging such a hefty sum, worrying about the repercussions for both them and his old man's firm. He bails. Later in the day, Rocky, the girl, shoots Alex a text, pleading with him to pull off the job on her behalf, aiming to free someone. While Alex delves into info about the vet, Rocky's back home with her lil sis, her ma, and her ma's new beau. The dude and her ma are a mess. It becomes crystal clear that Rocky's message to Alex was really about her sis when she starts asking her if she wants to split for California together. She's aiming to rescue her sister from their messed up family scene. Alex, Rocky, and Money scope out the vet's place in the surrounding area. Alex and Rocky sit alone in the car. She spills a childhood tale to him. And Alex assures her that once they wrap the gig, he'll tag along to California with them. Money hops back in the car, confirming what they knew about the crib when this Rottweiler springs at the girl's window. Some old-timer calls off the dog, and Money IDs him as the vet. They clock he's blind and start squabbling over the morality of jacking a blind dude. Later that night, they circle back to the hood. The vet's crib's all dark. They handle the dog first, doping it up with some meat laced with a little something. Trying the key swiped from Alex's old man's security gig, they find him useless at the front door. They scout for a side entrance or a window, but all they spot's a tiny window Rocky can squeeze through. She gets in and shuts down the alarm using a remote Alex past her. She catches sight of framed snaps of the vet's deceased daughter on the mantle. Meanwhile, Alex and Money are on standby, waiting for her signal to get in. Once they're in, they start rummaging around, on the hunt for the safe with the cash. Rocky checks out the closet. Money heads up a floor to chloroform the old vet, aiming to keep him out cold. He spots the vet sleeping in his room, the sounds of a video featuring his daughter as a kid playing in the background. The vet wakes up, shuts off the TV but Money still manages to release the gas. He comes back down, and the trio spots a bolted door, guessing the loot stashed behind it. Money pulls out a piece, assuming the vet's knocked out, and blasts the bolt. Alex, spooked by the gun's presence and its implications, decides to bail. He grabs his kicks from the stack and splits. Money and Rocky crack open the door, but out of nowhere, the vet shows up, asking who's there. Things go quiet between the two, but he picks up Money's voice and tails him, at first trying to spin a lie, then attempting to reason with the old man. He fires a shot to spook him, but it doesn't deter him. Alex catches the sound of the shot from outside. The vet snatches the gun and fires, hitting him in the head. Unaware that the girl is also present, she hides in the closet. Alex enters the crib, narrowly avoiding the vet, darting around to lock down the doors and windows. He ducks into the bathroom and texts Rocky. She discloses her hiding spot, and he heads her way. But before Alex arrives, the vet steps into the closet, chips away at the drywall to unveil the safe, punches in his code, and checks if the cash is intact. Once he confirms it's untouched, he shuts the safe and strolls off, still clueless about Rocky hiding there too. Alex enters the closet, suggesting they dial the cops. Rocky's not having it. She cracks open the safe and snags the cash, surprising him. Alex figures there's a cool mill in there. They opt to leave through the bolted door, thinking it'll lead him down to the basement and a hatch out to the yard. But before they can budge the door, the vet emerges from inside, dragging Money's body to another part of the crib. Following a little fright, he sticks to his task giving them enough room to dart through the door. He's still in the dark about their presence until he stumbles upon their shoes moments later. He heads over to check the safe and realizes the dose vanished. Meanwhile, Alex and Rocky are exploring the basement. They're taken aback to discover a girl bound with army cords. 
The second she stirs, a ring tied to her alerts the vet that something's up downstairs. While down there, Alex and Rocky realize she's the one who hit his daughter. Despite that, Rocky decides to aid her, no matter her past. They aim for the basement hatch, but the vet's already there, guns blazing. He takes out the girl who took his daughter's life. While Alex and Rocky make a break for it, the vet mourns over the girl's body, calling out to his baby, proclaiming her dead. Then he's hot on their heels through the sprawling basement after cutting the power. With everyone somewhat blinded, he almost gets hold of them, nearly strangling Alex, but the guy breaks free with Rocky once more. Up outside the basement, the Rottweiler, fully alert now, awaits them. The dog gives chase on the second floor, trapping them in a room with barred windows, seemingly with no way out. Meanwhile, the vet catches up, outside the room with his dog and gun. Rocky and Alex scramble to find an exit when she spots a vent on the wall. He instructs her to crawl through while he guards the door. As she slips into the vent, the old guy and the dog bust through the doors, going after Alex. He tumbles out a window onto a skylight, one floor below. Meanwhile, in the room, the dog tracks Rocky's scent into the vent, chasing her through the shaft. She leaps into a vertical shaft, trying to shake it off. The vet figures out Alex's location and blasts the window, sending him crashing down to the ground floor. Alex bolts again, but the vet catches him in the tool shed where Money's body was stashed. He pummels Alex unconscious and drives giant gardening shears into him. Rocky comes to in the shaft, hurting and sore. She starts crawling through the vents and spots two openings, one leading downward inside the house and the other outside the house. Trying to force her way through the bars toward the house's exit, the vet snatches her from the other side. Rocky comes to in the basement, tied up just like the other girl. The vet's there, and she pleads with him to release her, promising not to spill about the girl. But he explains it wasn't about torture or payback for what she did to his daughter. His twisted idea was that since she took his kid, it's only fair she gives him one in return. He's been holding her there because she's carrying his child. With his warped reasoning, he concludes Rocky's responsible for her death and should face the consequences. Meanwhile, Alex comes too. Turns out, the vet didn't stab him but Money's body. He lures the dog into a room and secures it inside, then unlocks the front door. Down in the basement, the vet's prepping something. He informs Rocky that she's now supposed to carry his child instead of the girl. He claims he's no rapist and won't force himself on her, just his sperm. Turns out, he was heating up his sperm to inject it into her. Luckily, Alex barges in just in time, preventing the vet from doing what he intended with Rocky. Alex shackles the vet and frees Rocky, who gives the old man a proper beating and then some. Alex insists they can't call the cops now and suggests leaving the vet chained up in the basement. They grab the cash and head out of the basement toward the front door. As soon as Alex swings the door open, the vet fires off a shot, hitting Alex, who's managed to break loose. It's already bright outside as Rocky takes off running. The vet sets his Rottweiler after her. After a lengthy chase, she finally reaches Money's ride. But when the dog catches up, she accidentally drops the money bag outside. To add to that, once she's in the car, she realizes she's missing the key. Resourcefully, Rocky locks the dog inside the car, but the moment she steps out and grabs the bag, the vet grabs hold of her once more, yanking her back toward his crib by her hair. When they arrive, Rocky finds the alarm remote and triggers it. The noise totally throws the vet off balance, and she shoves him into the basement. Figuring he's done for, she snatches the cash and bolts, just as the cops pull up to the house. Rocky's at the airport bar, chilling with her little sis, tuning into the news blaring from the TV. The anchor's discussing the whole situation. Turns out, the vet survived the fall. Yet, he conveniently skips mentioning her involvement in the heist or the vanished money. Rocky's all set to start a new chapter out in California with her sis. Maybe.